If there's one place in the world you can go to find just about anything, it's New York City. We've come to the Big Apple to see if that's true. Can big guys find clothes they actually want to wear in the sizes they need? We'll try to answer that question by meeting up with a designer making high-end fashions exclusively for plus-size men. We'll also head to Brooklyn to talk to my buddy Marquise, who shows us how he creates a look in his own unique style with a new outfit from JCPenney. Plus, you can't go to New York without trying the food. We'll experience some of the gastronomic delights the city has to offer. But first, a man's got to take care of himself. I'm heading to Heyday in Tribeca for a beard facial. Your style is an extension of your personality and how you groom yourself helps shape that style. Don't let anyone tell you that going on a trip to the spa isn't manly. Taking time to treat yourself is something everyone should do. My problem is that even though my skin's dry, it gets shiny and oily. I think you're really gonna like this and see a difference. How often should I be doing something like this? I tell my clients that once a month is optimal. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it's great. That's our chill oil. Wow. It smells so good. And are you using any beard oil? Yeah, so I have a beard shampoo and I have a beard oil. How are you feeling with this? Oh, this is awesome. Do you smell that weird kind of metally smell? I do. Yeah, so that's the bacteria being killed. So essentially what this is, is Tesla electricity current and argon gas. And it's an indirect current, so it's not going into your skin or anything, but it creates oxygen. I'm looking good, feeling good. Now I'm ready to take on New York City. For lunch, it's time to sample some of New York's best eats. First, I hit a local street food festival. Oh yeah. Then we were lucky enough to get into the world famous Raclette, the greatest melted cheese restaurant around. Whoa, look at all that cheese. After all that great food, it's time to meet up with my friend Marquise Neal, AKA Marquis Mode. He's showing the world that big men can be just as creative and stylish as anyone else. So, how did you get into this world of Instagram and you know being out there and you know everything that you're doing yeah. here? I don't, I don't, I don't know what you call how, it necessarily. Yeah, how did I, how did I get started? I guess. Right. Um, I got started because I had a, honestly, I had a friend who who plus size blogged um, when I was growing up, and I. I always just kind of idolized the fact that there were so many people being so receptive to the way that they dressed and it was something as simple as just showing how you get dressed in the AM for other people that don't maybe have the same vision as you. And for me, I've always been kind of an eccentric personality and so I, I kind of wanted people to understand what it was like to get dressed but as somebody who was male as opposed to somebody who identified as female. So for me it was, it was just posting outfits every single day. Um, showing people what it was like to kind of like have my aesthetic because I, I don't particularly dress fairly normal but I'm not so out of the box that it's not achievable. So I just I started showing people what it was like to to get dressed in outfits that they could find anywhere that was realistically achievable for them. So a JC Penney's, you know, kind of like a any sort of like mass marketed department store that you could go to to find an outfit or, or to find a particular look for a particular day or maybe an event even. And I just kind of just started showing people that you can find really out of the box looks just in your local department store. It doesn't just have to be thrift. Because hmm. a lot of people love that, that thrift and you know finding something that's so, so unique to them. But I find that a lot of people don't understand or see the beauty of the things that are in front of them. Um, you know, so I just try to shine light on places that have have discoverable things. Nice. Yeah. It's awesome. Of course. And then from there, I just I just try to show it every single day. Um, people started liking what I did. So here we are at JC Penney. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what that's where you start, and it kind of grows. And yeah, for you know. sure. It's it's nice because like everybody gets dressed in the morning. You know, everybody gets dressed every single day. And a lot of people, it's hard for them to, to feel good about the way that they look, especially if they feel like what they're wearing isn't up to par with what they see either online or in a magazine or sure. nowadays with Instagram and YouTube, social media. So for me, it, it's really about embracing the fact that just because you don't have either a lot of money or you can't shop anywhere 
that's super, super special or super, super luxurious, um, that there's still something out there for you, you know? Right. There, there's, there's not, not a place for you. There's definitely places where you can find outfits that look like a million dollars, but could have cost you, let's say, 1% of that. So, <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's the nice thing about it, is that there are places to, to shop, and yeah. uh, you have real resources. And I, I think one of the cool things that I like here is, you know, like Foundry, which is uh, JC Penny line, that they're, they're actually doing some things that are, uh, stylish and fashion forward and yeah, uh, for sure. yeah and they've put together some different looks that you can combine and make something that you're going to feel good about because really at the end of the day that's the idea is that what you're good. wearing you exactly. want to look good right it's like it doesn't matter how much it costs it doesn't matter where it came from as long as you just feel good in it that tends to be the common denominator in in any outfit is that you feel good and you look good right so this is really nice speaking of foundry this is cool perfect Thank you, Mannequin, for inspiring me. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about these joggers? They're foundry joggers. I actually really like these, and I feel like they would go really well with this. Seems like something I would probably kind of throw on. Perfect. Throw today, yeah. Cool, nice. You know? Ooh, that hat looks pretty nice over there. Yes. Cool, yeah. Perfect. Sweet. All right, so we've got pants, we've got a shirt, we've got a hat. And shoes. Ooh, boots. Yes. And in my size. Sweet. Let's, uh, let's get that. Here we go. Sweet. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an outfit. We have an outfit, everyone. Cool, let's go try this on. Perfect. <laughs> The fact that you were able to get something like that here and put that together, pretty awesome. Yeah, well, I think the like the best part about it is that as so much as you would find an outfit at JCPenney, I would find an outfit at JCPenney. And like right. we have totally different looks, yet here we are. Like if you wore the exact same outfit, you know, yeah. we would definitely be able to, to find something that would be similar. I actually want this outfit. I well, <laughs> you can get it, friend. It's all here. I love it. Yeah, I really like it too. I'm really probably going to tote around a lot in this. After leaving JCPenney, I wanted more of the New York experience, so I decided to take in the sights and sounds of Central Park. Look at that bubble! Not bad for my first try. When Brandon Coates couldn't find clothing he wanted to wear in his size, he created the Brandon Kyle collection to fill that void. I'm meeting up with him to talk about what's next for his line. So tell me how you got started and how you got into fashion in general. Sure, I've been in the fashion industry now for 10 years. I started out, I went to school, for, I went to LIM College. Um, my background is actually visual merchandising and product development. So it's actually not fashion originally. So it, it kind of happened. I was in college, I needed to do an internship. And one of the companies that I started interning with, they actually ended up keeping me. So that was kind of my first feat into the industry. I was 20 years old, starting out fresh, didn't know much of anything. But I always had an eye. So that, that was always it, because I always had family members and friends that were always like, trust me, pick this out for me, figure me out, because I don't know what I'm doing. So that's kind of where it all started. You know, I went to school, um, and while I was in school, I, I interned, and then that internship turned into a full-time job, which I kept for eight years. <laughs> wow, and so that job was in fashion? and you That were... job was in fashion, working for Monique C. Oh, nice, nice. So what did you learn there that kind of prepared you to do your own thing? Well, the beautiful thing about it is when I started Moni FC, it was a startup. Um, I, I came in on year one or two, so I was able to grow with the business, which was excellent for me because I, I really got to get the ins and outs, you know, having my hand in multiple pots, not only working on the design and aesthetics, but also being physically responsible and understanding the business end of it, which is the most important part because I tell people all the time, it's 90% business, 10% fashion. Wow. So really everything you were doing was preparing you to do your own thing. Absolutely. Nice. So when, I guess why and when did you decide that you wanted to take that step and do your own thing? I woke up on my 29th birthday and I took stock of my life and I realized I hadn't really achieved all what I wanted to. This is something that I've been silently thinking about and kind of thinking about for a long time and a long time, but I really wanted to do it. So, you know, with the help of my mother, um, who's been instrumental in me starting Brandon Kyle. You know, I came to her with this idea and 
you know, I come from a Caribbean background, very pragmatic. So you go to school, you get a good job, you grow, you start a family. That's kind of the 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 lot for you. So when I came to her with this crazy idea, hey mom, after 10 years, I'm gonna quit my job and start this business. I was expecting her to say, you're crazy. What are you doing? Go back, go get a job, do something else. But she was very supportive and she says, I believe in you. So here's your first set of money to start this business. Wow. So that's kind of how it all started. Cause I, I, I had this great idea, but I didn't know how I was gonna pay for it. Uh, it makes such a difference having people behind you that Absolutely. support you and want you to succeed at the thing that you are going to try because you're taking a gamble when you try something like that. So, and this was totally a gamble because I, I toyed with the idea, you know, I've been doing plus sizes for 10 years and part of it too was I wanted to do something different. So I was like, how could, how could I make this different? How can it feel different from what I've already done? So I was like, do I do straight sizes? I mean, I know the market, I could kind of do it, but there's so much noise in the market and it didn't feel organic, it didn't feel special. So, you know, I really sat back and did some introspection and thought about who I am, what I wanted, the kind of clothes that I would want to wear, and the hard time that I've had over the years trying to find the things that I've always wanted. So. I figured who better than me to start. I love that. And I think that a lot of great ideas come out of necessity and need. And Absolutely. being able to take something like that and and turn it into uh, your own brand, your own line, that's that's huge. Uh, what was what were some of the challenges that you ran into when you started doing this? Uh, some of the challenges that I ran into when I started doing this were Basically figuring out who's who in the industry, you know, like I, I spent about six months just doing research Like I went into my back cave and literally was looking up any and everything that had to do with plus male fashion mm -hmm. uh, Which is actually how I found you <laughs> right. um, And then I reached out to you and sent you that discovery email. I was just like I'm starting this line I don't really know what this is gonna be, but What do you think about the idea? Like is this even a valid thing? Like do people actually really care? So your response was yeah, it is you should go for it and you know, here we are almost a year later. That's pretty awesome. And I, I remember you reaching out and, you know, we talked because you'd sent me this email and, you know, you were talking about doing this. And uh, from there, from building, you know, from taking your idea and actually launching and you've, it's, you're coming up on a year, right? So what was, what was it like when you actually launched? Uh, scary. It was extremely scary because although I have done this before, like I've launched brands before and I've, I've been doing this kind of work for for 10 years, mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole different landscape. I didn't really know who my customer base was going to be. Mm -hmm. I, th I had an idea based on the market, uh, the, mar the research market, marketing research that I've done, mm -hmm. but I didn't really know who was my customer. Like I didn't really know. Are there guys out there like me who really like, really like fashion forward pieces or you know, do I go safe? Do I push the envelope? Like that was kind of what was going through my head when I was first starting. Like, what does the brand look like? What is my identity? So I decided to just keep it authentic. And with me keeping it authentic, it, everything kind of starts to fall into place. But of course you run into your challenges of, you know, finding the right people to, to help. Thankfully, I have a great network of friends that I've worked with over the years that have kind of come on board and, and taken different aspects of the business because it's overwhelming, you know, that's the biggest part of it all is you're here, you're doing all this yourself, you know, because I manage my own website, you know, I oversee my own production, all, all of these different facets that you normally would have a team of people working on, you know, so that, that was the most daunting part of it all. Right. But, you know, having good friends and, and industry people that have kind of helped guide me and even mentors in the industry that have kind of shown me certain things and I can kind of bounce ideas off of or if somebody approaches me about something, I can kind of run it by them and say, what do you guys think about this? Is, should I even, you know, waste my time here or, you know, or should I put any stock into it? And that's usually a good, um, they usually give me some pretty good direction in terms of that. So that's been pretty good. Having that kind of support system really helps. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, one of the things that I think is really interesting about what you do is that it is very unique in the landscape of plus size men's fashion big and tall, whatever you want to call it, the modern big and tall, whatever that is right now. Right. So many names. There's so many names. Yeah. It, hashtag, I, hashtag, hashtag, hashtag. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. So it's, it's, it is really interesting to me because it's very, it's very unique. You are creating fashion for 
big men. And that is something that nobody else is doing. And uh, I can definitely see, and I thought when we first talked, when we first corresponded over email, I definitely thought that there was a chance that that wouldn't work out. But I also knew that we get emails at Chubster from people who are like, well, where can I find the fashionable stuff? Where can I find things that that represent me in a, in a way that's not just like polo shirts and you know, and shorts, uh, and they wanted things that were, that would really stand out. And I think that what you're doing, you're really the first of your kind doing this. And I, I think that it helps show, it gives everything else that we're doing, not just that you're doing, but all of us, a legitimacy that we didn't have before, because there is this preconceived notion that bigger people don't care about how they look and they don't care about style. Absolutely. So uh, can you talk a little bit about what the response has been, you know, since you've kind of gotten out there now that you're launched, you're coming up on a year. Uh, what was it like when you put this out and people saw that you had created this option? The response was overwhelming when I first started. I didn't expect it. I thought that when I started, you know, I would get a few people saying, hey, that's great. You know, congratulations on starting your line. But the response was really overwhelming. Mm -hmm. and. The, the emails that I would get. And I think what really started to make it really sink in for me was when after we, we shipped the first collection to the customer, because I work, I work direct to the customer, I ship everything straight, straight to my customer. Um, the emails that I would get back with the, the pictures, you know, the guys at their events and doing different things, like those testimonials, that's what really solidified it for me. That was the most important part, because okay, you got your product now, how do you really feel about it? And you know, the response has been, I've, so many compliments, you know, people couldn't stop complimenting me. I felt great, you know, thank you so much for what you do. Right. So th those are responses that really helped kind of push this along and I live for it. My customer is, is, is everything to me. So Esquire did an article and they interviewed you for this and really the big piece of the article, the meat of it was about you and your experience in doing this and that was a recent thing that just came out and uh, I know Chubster was mentioned in it and we've seen uh, you know real a real explosion in interest so I can't imagine what it's like for you absolutely. at this point can you talk a little bit about absolutely. that absolutely can I first tell you that I didn't expect that like the piece I, I thought it was gonna be a well-written article and that was kind of all it was gonna be you know we shot this we talked about it months ago they interviewed me months ago and had some follow-up questions I didn't really think it was going to be that big of a deal because, mm -hmm. you know, being in the industry for so many years, I've seen how we kind of get marginalized by mainstream media. So I wasn't expecting much, but the piece was really well written and it was really done well. And I, it was surprising to me because I didn't really know that it was going to be as big as it was. And the response has been amazing. <laughs> I've, I have people from all over the world that are, are like, not only the traffic to my site, but just eyes on my social and just... Mm -hmm. A general interest in the brand and you know the, the response has been really great I, I i couldn't have asked for more it really feels like in general uh the this part of the industry the 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 men's fashion part of, of plus size is starting mm -hmm. to grow exponentially absolutely and if you look at it just in the last couple of years you can really see that it's kind of gone and it started to go up and i feel like I feel like we're going to see a lot more of that in the future. What, what do you think, where do you think things will be in the next, say, three years? I, mean. I think the industry is gonna, is gonna boom. I think we are gonna see more brands. Um, I think we're gonna see more content. I think we're gonna see more media placements. We're gonna see more celebrities becoming, you know, more mainstream and mm -hmm. being celebrated for being, you know, big and tall or plus male, whatever they wanna call themselves. But. I really see the industry growing, and even though like the model industry, because I know there's so many guys that are eager to, to break into that world, more agencies that are gonna be signing more plus models, you mm -hmm. know? I think the, the boards will get bigger, I think the brands will get broader, mm -hmm. there'll be more reach, and there'll be more options. I just think there'll be more. I'm excited to see what happens, and I'm definitely excited to see where you're at in another year. Which is awesome, I, I am too. Yeah. <laughs> but the, the way things have been going so far, it's been really, really, really great. That's awesome. So you brought some clothes. Absolutely. Can we take a look? Absolutely. All right. All right, so the first piece I wanted to show you from the collection, which is one of our best sellers, is the tuxedo shirt. So typically a tuxedo shirt, if you wear one in your lifetime, like that's a lot. 
Um, but I wanted to take the concept and really make it more wearable kind of every day. So by changing it to this contrast bib, um, it gives this, this, this piece more life because you can do so many different things with it. So we've, I've done multiple patterns in here. I've done sequin, I've done camouflage and different things, but the sequin just done very well, particularly this one. Because a piece like this, you dress it up with a suit for a wedding, but this can also be worn on a casual Saturday with a pair of jeans and sneakers. I love this. I love the detail here. Absolutely. You know, I love the contrast bib with the gold button. Like, it just feels very luxe. And of course, you can feel the, the, the cotton. Like, oh, yeah. I, I, I picked some nice. very special for the fabrics that I use. And I also made it French cuff, which I think is excellent. Because I feel like every guy should have at, least have at least one French cuff shirt in their closet. Just feels very rich and regal to me. The next piece here, which is our military jacket, which Ooh. I absolutely adore. This surprised me because when I was going through the collection, like this was the highest price point item when we first started, and this was actually the first piece to sell out. Wow, nice. We're telling at 250. So that that to me was extremely surprising, but you know this beautiful cotton twill, which I love. You can feel it. Oh yeah. And what I love is everything has stretch. Yeah, perfect. Everything has stretch, and of course, I'm 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 all about my details. So the buttons with kind of like the military-inspired feel. Like I love everything military. Oh yeah. The next is the bomber jacket, which is just a cool, easy piece. Like you can wear this, you know, as a jacket, or you can wear it just kind of like because there's a coordinating pant that goes with it, so you can kind of wear it as a set. But again, it's this beautiful lux knit ponte fabric. Ooh. Feels like pajamas, doesn't oh, it? Oh yeah, I like that. <laughs> it's just easy <laughs> to wear, and of course, you know, I'm, I'm big on the details. Mm -hmm. I love an epaulet, and just kind of making it feel special. So the details make such a difference. Oh, you absolutely. Really, it really adds something and pulls it all together. Absolutely. So of course, these little fashion touches that I add to things to make it feel special. And then one of my favorite pieces, the duster. So I love a long jacket. It's just easy. Like I throw this on with a t-shirt underneath it and a pair of jeans, and I'm done for the day. Like. I don't have a whole lot of time to think about what I'm getting dressed, so I need pieces that are just gonna already be what they are. Nice. So a piece like this, dress it up, dress it down. Such an easy wearable piece. Again, that same cotton twill um, with that beautiful stretch in it. So, and the structure is nice, you know, with the beautiful um, long shawl collar, which elongates the body and just gives a really nice line to the body. Nice. And a nice deep pockets. You know, it's just, and the length is great. So yeah, this is one of my favorite pieces. I wear these almost every day. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. What, one of the things that I like about your pieces is that you can really, you could have a an outfit that's a little more laid back and you could add this and there you go. Boom, you've got a whole thing exactly. and it looks great. I talk about every piece in Brandon Kyle collection is a statement piece, mm. you know, it's a conversation. So yeah, love the dusted jackets. The next piece is the high-waisted pit, which I absolutely adore. Um, I didn't want to do a regular, just a regular pair of trousers. There's so many of those in the market already. So I wanted to do something special. So what makes these pants unique are the, is the fly. You see it's got this kind of really cool asymmetrical detail. In it. Oh wow. And it's, it's double. Oh, I love that. Double hook and bar with the zipper, which I love. This waistband is really nice and sturdy. Um, the beautiful thing about these pants, you can wear them kind of higher or up on your stomach, or you can wear them lower. So, you know, they're versatile. And you know, the leg is nice and generous. It's got a great, you know, side pocket, so, and then the, the pleat detailing here, which just kind of allows it to float away from the hip a little bit. I love the way the back looks. You got the two pockets, fully functional pockets. You know, oh, nice. and again, this beautiful heavy cotton. Oh yeah, this is great. So, nice. like, I love the, that. the pieces are sturdy and they're made to last. And lastly, which is one of the pieces that I absolutely adore, is the jogger. I live in these joggers. I love joggers. <laughs> I live in joggers. And again, it's in that same beautiful Ponte fabric. Feel that? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's perfect. But what makes these special from any other jogger on the market, because nobody else has done this, mm -hmm. is that they're convertible. They oh, zip, nice. They zip off into a complete short. Perfect for hot days. Absolutely. I love Those it. Those days when you really don't know what the weather's gonna be, like mm -hmm. it's just a versatile piece. So you can go from a jogger to a short effortlessly. And it's That's got awesome. the great deep park, you know, cargo pockets here and the drawstring with the gold detailing. So I'm really big on details and fabric and you know, giving bang for the buck. Mm -hmm. So 
for me, like every piece in the collection is special. So when you get something from the Brand Car collection, you're gonna feel like you've got your money's worth out of it. It's time to explore New York City at night. I took the subway to Manhattan to find even more of the great food the city's known for. You might not think of barbecue when you think of New York City, but you've got to try Butcher Bar next time you're in town. We've visited some incredible cities and met some wonderful people, and hopefully we've been able to show you that there are some great options for big men's fashion no matter where you live. I want to thank everyone who joined us along the way, and a special thanks to JC Penny for making this all possible. Now, season one is over, but Sized Up is just getting started. Be sure you click the subscribe button below so you can find out what's coming next from Chubster. Thanks for watching.